October 21st, 2015 at 4.29 p.m. Welcome to the future. Or at least the fictional future that was portrayed in Back to the Future Part 2 at this exact moment October 21st, 2015 at 4.29 p.m was the moment in which Marty, Doc, and Jennifer arrived in what would be considered their future, which is our present. The media has really made a big, big, you know, um, splash about this. And rightfully so, because it's fun to think about the kinds of things that these science fiction movies predict um, and perhaps got right or wrong. Now, there are a lot of people that have already done this. I'm going to give my take on it. So, to start off with, in Marty's 2015, we've got flying cars. Well, we don't have flying cars yet. Apparently they are available, but it seems nobody wants them. Um, and I can understand why. First of all, if I'm correct, you have to have a full-on pilot's license to operate one. And second, they cost about as much as a Rolls Royce. So, <laughs> um, but there is one thing. You know, a lot of people are asking, where there's, where's our flying cars, etc., etc., I think that somebody forgot to mention that, with the exception of the DeLorean in the, in the film, all the other flying cars didn't emit a single ounce of exhaust. Um, they were running on some kind of unknown renewable energy. I think probably some variation of the Mr. Fusion um, um, device that was on the back of the DeLorean that was powering the time circuits. And in our 2015, here in reality, um, we are actually moving towards cleaner energy. We may not have flying cars, but we're, we're producing cars that are, clean, that are better for the environment. We're also producing vehicles that are, um, or testing vehicles that are self-driving. And I think personally that that's way better. If we could get the pollutions down to zero, then I could see flying cars... Um, really being a plus, but at the moment, if we were to take what we have now and get them into the sky, um, I could just see that being a problem for the environment. You know, you just have a lot more smog. It's already bad enough as it is. So another thing that we were supposed to have um, in the future, excuse me, was portable visors that allow you to do stuff. Excuse me. And in this case, we've got things like Google Glass, we've got these virtual reality headsets that are becoming, well not becoming, that are here. In fact, recently, earlier, I think it was earlier this month, uh, Samsung had released a version 2 of the um, Gear headset. And then of course, Microsoft is, has, um, you know, is working on their HoloLens. I mean, yes, it's available, but $2,000 is way out of the realm of consumers. I think it's primarily meant towards de for developers at this stage. Another thing that they hi highlighted in the film was a um, was a connected home of sorts, um, where you could ask the central computer to do things like give you fruit from the ceiling, for instance. <laughs> now, I don't know of a single house that has an automated fruit dispenser in the ceiling with plants, but <laughs> the idea is pretty much the same if you think about it, because we've got things like the Nest thermostat and um, the Nest smoke alarm that are owned by Google that allow you to alter the dynamics of your house environment from your smartphone or from your computer. Um, we've also got remote security systems that allow you to plug in over the internet. Now, um, I, can, I can already see one or two of the comments saying, well, they're not, they're not really usable yet. I have to agree. Um, the thermostats are um, 
from what I understand, they seem to work really well, but these security systems are really a hit and miss, and, and it has to do a lot with the devices themselves, with your internet connection, stuff like that. Um, we also have, you probably, if you've seen the movie, you probably remember in the movie when the police took Jennifer home and they pushed her thumb to the, um, to the print where the doorbell normally would be. Um, we've already got that, too. We've got automated door locks in the, in the, in the area of this, uh, quick set automated lock with, um, this is my favorite because it's got a mechanical key backup, um, if, if the power were ever out in your house, you could still get reach for your mechanical key and unlock the door if you needed to get in. Um, here's another take on it. I can't remember which one this was, or these for that matter. But this one in particular, you notice on the screen it says, Welcome John. Well, the voice in the movie said, Welcome home, Jennifer. You know, we've got this. It It's here. It It really is here. And it's just mind-blowing to think that 30 years ago a lot of what they predicted they got right another thing another example was video calls I'm gonna turn the magnifier off um, so you can see better but you remember in the movie when needles pretty much got Marty older Marty fired the way he did it was through an 80 inch um, TV screen that was mounted to the fireplace through video calls We've got smart TVs now that can do this very thing. Probably not get you fired, I hope. But but um, the idea is the same. you got this 80-inch this uh, TV that is razor thin that you could mount onto your fireplace and, and do things like you've got your Facebook. Um, you've got... Uh, let's see if there's anything else I recognize. Well, I don't. This is a... This is a um, oh, you got YouTube, Skype... Yeah, you've got you've got um, um, and you've got a lot of things here that I again I don't recognize. This is a Samsung uh, South Korean domestic um, booth at, at a trade show, but the idea is the same. Um, you know, I I remember Samsung. I think there was a bit of a hoopla going on about Samsung effectively saying if you want to use our services, we're going to have to record everything that you do. This goes back to my privacy video I made about a week or two ago about how rather than fearing being found out, we should control what goes up there in the first place. As we expand to this vision that was seen in Back to the Future and other similar science fiction films, we're just going to have to come to grips with the fact that um, if we want privacy, we're basically going to have to disconnect. But that's, again, I've already spoken about that. But the idea here, 80-inch smart TV that you can mount to the wall you know something else that back to the future got right uh, video calls again we've got multiple video calling services we've got FaceTime Skype hangouts video calls in messenger uh, whatsapp Let's see what, what's this one here this is talkatone that's one I haven't heard of hmm. one final thing that I want to touch on in terms of the um, in terms of the smart home that we don't have is the Black & Decker Hydrator. And I was thinking about that before making this video. You know, back, um, I think back in the early days of the space program, I think they did dehydrate your food at least a little bit, and you had to put it in a special oven to fix it up. Now, it didn't, like in the movie, you basically take a, a, a pizza that's maybe about two inches in diameter, stick it in the center of the pan, put it in this thing, you know, tell it what cooking level you want, wait five seconds, and boom, instant pizza, right? Well, we're not there yet, but I've been wondering about that, whether or not the technology they used aboard the space shuttle during those years, how it would be possible to adapt that for civilian use. But at the same time, it's just mind-blowing that so many, th there's some things they got wrong, um, another thing I remember they got wrong was the fax machines. Aside from some very specific use cases, I don't know anybody that uses a fax anymore. I certainly don't. Um, but then a lot of things they got right. Video calling, the smart home. We may not have commercially available flying cars yet. Um, but at the same time, I think that we're heading towards a more important goal, which was zero emissions and, 
and self-driving cars. Um, the, um, the other thing a lot of people are going to touch on, I can see in the comments, is the hoverboard. Personally speaking, I don't care whether that becomes reality because my balance is so bad, I wouldn't be able to use that anyway. Now, when I say reality, I'm talking about beyond the development stage. Right now, it's currently being developed in California using a magnetic system um, that is, um, you know, like I said, it's in, it's in development, but it's not commercially available yet. We're getting there. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming in the coming years but a lot of people are wondering you know like today is the 21st of October 2015 as I'm recording this October 21st 2015 at 4:40 p.m. and a lot of people are wondering you know a lot of things that they predicted haven't necessarily come to be um, like I said the flying cars the black and decker hydrator and a lot of science fiction films, they, they tend to get things wrong. But at the same time, they oftentimes they would get things right. And this is why I personally think, and I've done a video on this, you're welcome to go back and take a look. Um, science fiction is science fact that's not yet realized. Happy Back to the Future Day. Thank you for watching, comments, welcome, and have a nice day.